Hello, my friends. A very good morning. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit, in His infinite greatness, in His mercy, compassion, righteousness, may He come to enlighten the understanding of each of you, all of us, so that we may know how to behave ourselves in order to please Him, and then He will come to meet all of our needs. As David said once, delight yourself in the Lord, and He will satisfy the desires of your heart. And nothing pleases God more, my friend, nothing pleases God more than a pure heart and a pure conscience. A pure heart is a pure conscience, blameless, clean. When our conscience is at peace with God, then it pleases Him. When we have a clean conscience that we can walk with our head held up high, that we are not afraid of the police running after us or, or having our names involved in illegal activities and the police is trying to arrest us, well, we can walk with our head held up high at peace with God. And what brings this peace from God to us? How is this peace materialized in us? Ah, my friend, my dear friend, the soul, when it is at peace with God, when the soul is clean, meaning when the conscience is clean, there is no accusation at all, then we find ourselves at peace with God. Obviously, this peace is the peace of the soul, is the peace that everybody wants, but not everybody accepts or submit themselves or want to submit to the will of God. So, this is the subject that I'd like to speak to you about today. Because as long as the conscience is feeling guilty, the conscience feels accused. You did something wrong, you sinned, and you know you did it, and that you displeased before anything, before displeasing people, you displeased God. So you have committed a mistake, you made a mistake, and this mistake is there in your conscience, just as it happened to David. David is an example to us, or he's a reference to us, so that we can measure our soul. I believe that God allowed him to go through all that, to leave an example to us of how we have to behave before God. The sin of David was very serious. It was terrible. He was cruel, he was iniquitous, he planned the death of his soldier, of his faithful companion, in order to be with his wife. And what happened? What happened? The sin of David martyrized him 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day, David had his sin right there before him. And of course, he lost his peace there. He lost his peace. And that's why he says there in Psalm 51, it would be good for you to meditate on this Psalm later on, because he says like this, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, 
Blot out, blot out, make my transgressions disappear according to the multitude of your tender mercies. You see that he appeals to God, always reminding him of his loving kindness and tender mercies and, and God's love. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. He was not clean. And do you know why he was not clean? Because he had not confessed a hundred percent his sin. He, he for sure kept a few things for himself. So he was saying, wash me thoroughly. So this washing from God, washing our conscience and purifying us, is when we confess our sins indeed, and we are cleansed, we become clean before God, pure, with a blameless conscience, when we pour out our hearts before God and we place everything before the Almighty. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. And this is the problem. You know that by faith, all things are possible. All things are possible. However, all things are only possible in our lives when we are no longer in sin. Because sin brings doubt. And doubt neutralizes faith. This is why God speaks so much about sin, and that's why we are here constantly talking about sin, because sin makes faith, the faith that pleases God, isn't it? Isn't it by faith that we please God? So, faith becomes neutralized because of sin. But what did sin do? What does it do? Sin makes a person doubt whether or not God will listen to them, whether or not God will forgive them. Did you understand, my friend? That's why you have to eliminate sin. When you eliminate your sin, then your conscience will be clean and washed. But how can I eliminate my sin, Bishop, if it is always before me? By confessing it. Simply, oh my God, I recognize I made this mistake, I did this. Indeed, David took long to confess his sin. And that's why he said, my sin is always before me. But the day that he confessed his sins, that was it. Straight away, he was at peace with himself. Did you understand, my friend? He was at peace. He was forgiven. When he confessed his sin 100%, then he was forgiven 100%. That's it. He was forgiven. Thank God. However, due to his sin, God couldn't let him go unpunished. Not at all. He received forgiveness as soon as, as he confessed his sin. He confessed his sin, he was forgiven. Straight away, give and take. Confess your sin, God forgives 100%. If I confess 100%, then I'll, I'll be forgiven 100%. However, it does not mean that you or the person or the sinner or the ex-sinner, let's put it this way, let's call him an ex-sinner. It does not mean that that person will, oh, now everything will be easy, you're going to be at peace. And No. David, for all of his life, he reaped the fruit of his sin, even though God had forgiven him. 
The Bible says, God says that He is merciful, He is compassionate, He is full of love, that He forgives the sins, but He will not, He will not let the sin of that person go unpunished. They will reap the fruit of their sin. So, perhaps you are already forgiven from your sins, but you are reaping the fruit. David reaped the fruit of his cruel sin for all of his life until the day he died. He saw the fruit of his sin face to face. He was put to shame, humiliated, he was forgiven. God was with him, but he sowed and he had to reap. It's what is written. Everything that a man sows, that he will also reap. So you, my dear friend, you've sowed, you've sown sin in a conscious way. Obviously, that if you confessed, you are already forgiven, you are forgiven, you are clean, you don't owe God anything anymore, you owe nothing to the devil anymore. However, you've already sown that sin, so you're going to reap its fruit. It's not possible for you not to. So many people think that God is punishing them. No, but God is not punishing anybody. He is just fulfilling His word, His righteousness. He is righteous, don't forget that. God is love, but He is righteousness. He is not going to allow the person to be without reaping the fruits of what they sowed. But were not the sins already forgiven, Bishop? Yes, they were. So why are they going to reap it? Because they've sown it. They've sown it, so there's no other way. There's no way for a person to be free from the harvest. The person reaps God's blessings right there and then. You confess your sins, so straight away forgiveness comes, peace comes, the certainty that you are forgiven. However, the harvest of sin is going to be installment. Little by little. It's not going to be all at once. It will be little by little. That's what happened to David. That's what happened to him. He said, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Always before me. You know, there are words in the Bible that you cannot omit. You have to think and meditate well. For example, my sin is always before me, which means it never goes away, it's always there. But I was forgiven, yes, however, you cannot forget what you've done. You are going to reap what you sowed, and David reaped it. We are going to speak more about this tomorrow, and obviously in this soap opera in this series of kings, everything is being clarified. You are going to see it. You are going to see the situation in the next seasons of kings, okay? There on Record TV. We are going to end it here and we will come back tomorrow if God so allows. May God bless you all and don't forget in the last day of this year, the last day, at midnight, as we break into a new year, we are going to be there on Mount Hermon, back to Mount Hermon, the same mountain where Jesus went up with Peter, James and John, and he heard that voice saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. So, on the same mountain, we are going to be stretching out our hands towards the children of God and those who want to be children of God, those who want to be born of God, be born of the water and of the Holy Spirit.
In this New Year's Eve, we are going to be there stretching out our hands towards you. Okay? May God bless you all. And until then, in Jesus' name. Amen.